In the realm of philosophical inquiry lies a compelling question, what course shall we chart when the very pillars of our existence, the bedrock of our religions and time-honored traditions, crumble beneath our feet? How do we navigate the existential chasm left in the wake of nihilism's relentless erosion? Nihilism, a doctrine that proclaims the inherent meaninglessness of life, the absence of moral absolutes, and the illusory nature of societal constructs, confronts us with a stark reality all that we hold dear, all that we deem sacred, is but a fragile facade. At first glance, nihilism's proclamation of life's intrinsic insignificance may appear liberating, emancipating us from the burden of purpose and obligation. Imagine awakening to a world unburdened by the weight of moral imperatives or societal expectations, where the shackles of religious dogma and cultural conventions are cast aside. Yet, amidst this newfound freedom lies a profound void, a yawning abyss that threatens to engulf us in despair. The philosophy of nihilism, epitomized by the 19th century thinker Friedrich Nietzsche, challenges us to confront this existential void not with resignation but with resolve. Contrary to popular belief, Nietzsche did not advocate for a nihilistic society, rather, he viewed nihilism as a necessary crucible, a trial by fire through which humanity must pass to forge a new moral order. He posited that the world possesses no inherent structure or meaning, except that which we imbue upon it through our perceptions and beliefs. Nietzsche's philosophy serves as a clarion call to transcend nihilism's negation, to seize agency in the face of existential uncertainty. Yet, he warns of the perils of succumbing to nihilism's despair, for it threatens to unravel the very fabric of society, plunging humanity into a crisis of meaninglessness. Indeed, the echoes of Nietzsche's prophetic warnings reverberate through the annals of history, resonating with artists, social critics, and philosophers alike. In the tumultuous landscape of the 20th century, themes of nihilism found resonance amidst the angst and disillusionment of an era defined by anti-foundationalism and societal upheaval. As we traverse the uncharted waters of the 21st century, nihilism continues to cast its shadow, its tendrils of despair entwined with the existential anxieties of our time. In the wake of global crises, from pandemics to economic upheaval, the allure of nihilism beckons, offering solace amidst chaos. Yet, Nietzsche admonishes us to resist the siren song of despair, to confront the void not with resignation but with resilience. For in the crucible of nihilism lies the opportunity to forge a new ethos, to imbue our lives with meaning and purpose of our own making. Before we continue with our journey, I want to take a moment to ask you this question. Nihilism often focuses on exploring what aspect of human existence? A. Consciousness and self-consciousness B. Consciousness and unconsciousness C. Consciousness and self-degradation D. Existence and non-existence Let me know your answer in the comment. Back to our journey. The world, with its endless array of problems and the ceaseless stream of questions and worries it presents, can often seem overwhelming. However, within the philosophical concept of nihilism lies an intriguing opportunity the chance to embrace insignificance amid the chaos. Nihilism offers a sense of liberation, allowing us to feel indifferent toward the myriad concerns that would otherwise consume our attention day and night. In this realm, the world's affairs hold no sway over us, and we in turn have no impact on the world. In politics and hardships all lose their significance. Yet delving too deeply into nihilism brings its challenges. As we become more entrenched in its ideology, we risk losing sight of the things that bring us joy and fulfillment in life. Embracing nihilism may offer a temporary sense of relief, but it can also lead to a loss of purpose and motivation, leaving us feeling adrift in a world devoid of meaning. This sense of indifference extends beyond the external world to our own lives, resulting in feelings of emptiness and despair about our identity and existence. Moreover, nihilism challenges the very foundation of societal relationships and institutions, questioning their inherent value and significance. Without shared values and ethical principles, we risk societal disintegration and disconnection from those closest to us. In navigating the complexities of nihilism, we confront profound existential questions about the nature of our existence and the pursuit of meaning. 
It is a journey fraught with uncertainty and introspection, yet it also offers the opportunity for personal growth and self-discovery. Ultimately, while nihilism may offer a unique perspective on the world, it is essential to approach it with caution and awareness of its potential pitfalls. Finding meaning and purpose in life requires a delicate balance between embracing the freedom of insignificance and acknowledging the importance of personal responsibility and ethical principles in shaping our relationships in society as a whole. Nurtures a sense of detachment although not all institutions are flawless, many play pivotal roles in shaping our lives. We attend school not solely for education but also for socialization. Likewise, activities like playing basketball or attending religious gatherings serve dual purposes exercise and social interaction. These gatherings underscore the significance of community in fostering longevity and well-being. Moreover, these interactions cultivate empathy, a unique trait of human beings. To forsake empathy, as nihilism suggests, is to discard a fundamental aspect of our humanity, resulting in fractures within our social fabric a concern that deeply troubled Nietzsche. He perceived nihilism as a consequence of people's disillusionment with religious doctrines, particularly in the aftermath of the Enlightenment. As belief in God waned, the traditional meaning of life lost its relevance, leaving a void often filled by suffering and pain. Nietzsche emphasized the necessity of embracing profound experiences to truly live. He believed that from the depths of despair, the highest forms of growth emerge. Nietzsche aimed to reverse the course of nihilism, seeing it not as an endpoint but as a phase to transcend. He envisioned humanity discovering its true path by overcoming nihilistic tendencies. However, Nietzsche acknowledged that not everyone possesses the capacity to overcome nihilism. He categorized passive nihilists as individuals resigned to a life devoid of meaning, succumbing to feelings of emptiness and despair. This often leads them to seek solace in mass movements and ideologies that dictate their beliefs. On the contrary, active nihilists recognize the futility of their existence and strive to create new meaning. They engage in the process of deconstructing old values and constructing meaningful ones, much like sculptors chiseling away at a stone to create something purposeful. While finding meaning in life may not come naturally to everyone, Nietzsche suggested that through experiencing suffering and difficulty, individuals can gain insight into their desires and aspirations. For instance, observing a friend's dedication to tennis might inspire us to explore new hobbies or passions, ultimately leading us closer to discovering our purpose. When we witness suffering within our community, we have the power to transform our sorrow into action by engaging in activities such as volunteering at a local soup kitchen. By delving into our emotions, we uncover meaning and resilience that enable us to navigate the despondency often associated with nihilism. But how do we recognize when we've triumphed over nihilism? Imagine being told that you must relive your exact life repeatedly. If you can accept this fate, even amidst its challenges, without succumbing to nihilistic tendencies, then you're not perceiving life or the world through a nihilistic lens. Instead, you've cultivated an appreciation for life's miraculous essence, embracing every aspect of it even during the darkest times. Consider the metaphor of the shepherd and the snake when faced with adversity. The shepherd chooses survival by confronting and integrating the pain rather than letting it consume him. This illustrates the importance of taking charge of our despair and suffering rather than allowing external forces to dictate our lives. While nihilism may initially seem enticing, it's essential to recognize that its allure doesn't signify the downfall of society. If approached thoughtfully, nihilism can prompt us to reevaluate our perspectives, potentially liberating us from the constraints of conventional authorities like God or government. By shifting our focus to larger existential questions, we begin to uncover deeper meanings that extend beyond the confines of individual existence. If we see people suffering in our community, we can turn our sadness into action by volunteering at a local soup kitchen. When we study our emotions, we find meaning and can overcome the despair that nihilism might cause us. But how do we know when we've overcome it? Well, imagine you were told you had to live your exact life repeatedly. If you can accept this fate, even amidst its challenges, without succumbing to nihilistic tendencies, then you're not perceiving life or the world through a nihilistic lens. Instead, you've cultivated an appreciation for life's miraculous essence, embracing every aspect of it even during the darkest times. 
a metaphor for a shepherd, and a snake illustrates this point. The snake had crawled into the shepherd's throat, and at first he was choking on the snake. Then he bites his head off to save his own life. He spits out his head and allows the pain to be a part of him so that he can continue living. He takes control of the despair and the pain. When we allow others to dictate things for us, it doesn't feel good. We want to be in touch with our feelings and tackle our problems from a place of purpose. Nihilism doesn't let us do that. It leaves us instead susceptible to being controlled by others. The good news is that although Nietzsche thought that once the enlightenment happened and God became less relevant, people would spiral into a catatonic nihilistic state, they didn't. So now, even if nihilism feels like an enticing philosophy to embrace, it won't be the end of society as we know it. And if we play our cards right, it might help us by removing something like God or government from being a central figure in our existence. We pay attention to the sole meaning of our life and put it on something bigger. Maybe our one life doesn't hold all the meaning. I had believed that life would hold more meaning, but perhaps it's acceptable as it is. Some aspects of nihilism could serve as a remedy for the prevailing hyper-individualism, countering our obsession with finding significance in every aspect of our lives, from our occupations to our dietary choices. Seat introduced the term sunny nihilism, suggesting an opportunity to appreciate the present moment, even amidst the chaos and regardless of its perceived lack of meaning. The mere fact of being alive warrants us making the most out of it.